Hello, hello. It's Jess and I am really super late tonight, so sorry you guys. I actually was out having dinner with my husband and our boys. It was nice to be able to go out, but obviously we were a little bit late. <laughs> um, so now here I am. I'm probably going to try to keep it fairly short tonight, all things considered, um, just because it is late already and I know other people are probably going to be going live. So um, I will try not to keep you guys too long. So I'm just currently pulling up my uh, YouTube thingamajiggy so that I can see you guys commenting as you join in. <clears throat> um, side note, before we do get started, I wanted to let you guys know that I am 50 subscribers away from 3,000 and I am planning a really fun blog hop or video hop once I reach um, 3,000 and there will be prizes and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be looking for sponsors for that. So if you guys want to help promote me and share my channel with your friends or other crafty people that you know, I would really, really appreciate it because um, I'm only 50 away. That's like really small. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Um, okay, so I think I want to create something with some Simon Hurley stuff tonight. I've been kind of getting back into a... Simon Hurley create mood again. <laughs> um, I did want to show you guys the card that I made, um, the finished card that I started on Monday. So I'm going to grab that. Hold on one sec. It was actually over by, um, oh, thank you. Okay. For some reason, my comments are not popping up. Um, let me refresh. Hold on one second. I feel like I'm a little out of breath and I don't really know why I'm out of breath, but <laughs> here I am. Oh, thanks, Carol. Okay, I'm trying to refresh on YouTube because my stuff is being a little weird right now. Um, and I know that I'm really late, so I'm not sure if um, many people will jump on because this is not my normal time. This is like two hours later than my normal time that I go live. Um, okay, so the card that I made on Monday stream, this is how it actually turned out. I really like it. I think it turned out so cute. <laughs> um, hey, Lynn, how's it going? Um, okay, so I, when we were live, I can't remember how far we got, um, but I do know that I ended up having to cut my bunny out because I made this background that was so awful. I couldn't even like you guys remember originally that um, I had cut the circles out and I was gonna lay I was gonna layer the piece behind um, and have it like an inlay thing. Well, that did not work out and I ended up having to cut them out and pop them up instead of having them inlaid because I totally messed up the background. Um, it was really really bad. You don't want to see it. Maybe you do. I don't know, but <laughs> I think I actually threw it away. Um, and you know that's bad if I threw something away. <laughs> um, but I think it turned out pretty cute. Hey, Bonnie. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> um, so yeah, I used our little scenes that we drew in the live on Monday, and then I finished up the coloring. I tried to kind of make it look like a wood floor, but without being too detailed. Um, and then there's like the baseboard, and then just the wall. It's dark because it's nighttime. Um, and I tried to kind of give everything sort of like a gray tone. Um, just because I thought like with it being dark, it would make more sense that way. I don't know. And then I just went with this happily ever after sentiment because I thought that would be cute with a little knight and the princess and all that. So yeah, I think it turned out really cute. <coughs> Excuse me. And I did get it in before the, um, challenge ended. <laughs> so I was able to submit it for the card challenge. Yay. But that's that. So that's what we started on Monday. And you guys, I hate to admit, but I cannot bear to throw this away. I have no idea what in the world I would ever do with this. But I, I don't know why it's cute to me, but it is. <laughs> I have no clue what I would ever do with this, but here we are. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I'll find a use for it at some point. But for now, it'll just get set to the side. Okay, so... Uh, I've got my four Simon Hurley Creates sets. These are the four, these are all four of them um, that are out right now. Now um, there is Trampoline Friends, which has got the trampoline and the tree and all the little bouncing critters. Some really cute sentiments. 
We've also got Bestest Friends, which this one has the cute little bears, the tree stump. I love these big bold sentiments here. They're really cute and that they have the fine line ones that you can pair with them. Love that. Um, you've got Dudes too, which I use pretty frequently. Honestly, I use all of them kind of frequently. Hey Belinda, um, because they're all so super cute. <laughs> um, so I use the head a lot with this little body here. Um, although this one's really cute too, so they're all cute, whatever. Um, and then, yeah, you've got this other little body over here. You can mix and match all of them. They're all really cute. And then space training, of course. So you've got these letters. Um, that you can combine to make different sentiments, plus all the space themed, thing, uh, space themed things and this cute little set of critters down here at the bottom, which I just finished a card last night and unfortunately I can't share it because it's like really far away. However, I will tell you here, I've got, I've got an idea. Oh, I can't though because it has, never mind. I was going to say I could show you part of it because it, it, I made my own wood grain fence which is a big feat for me. And I think it looks kind of weird, but overall I think it turned out really cool. <laughs> um, but unfortunately it's not gonna be shared until August. So there's that. Um, so sometimes when I do guest design posts, they're really far in advance, which is a bummer because I always wanna share them right away, but alas, here we are. <laughs> um, okay, so then we also have stencils and background stamps. So we have uh, these two background stamps. I feel like I have another one. I do, it's Painted Lines, which is around here somewhere, but I don't quite know where. Hmm. Uh, oh, here it is. Man, I'm apparently quite disorganized today. So there's Painted Lines, there is the plaid background, which is called Classic Flannel, and then this one is called Flower, back oh, flower Garden. And these are all red rubber stamps. So they are really good. They give a really clean impression. I really like these ones. And then we've got stencils. So Stargazer, which is like obviously the star background, looks like rain, which is the raindrops, and then Backsplash, which is super cute. Um, Geometric-ish background. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got that. And then I also have the full collection of Simon's ink pads here. So um, there are 12 colors all together and we can use those as well. Um, I'm just trying to think what I really kind of want to do because I don't know. <laughs> sometimes I have an idea in my head already and sometimes I just don't quite know yet what I want to do with the project. So um, clear off my desk a little bit. All right, so we've got white cardstock to start out with. <laughs> um, let's see trying to think of what kind of card I want to make. Now I've done some Father's Day. I shared one from this stamp set that was like a hey, 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 dad stamp set uh, or card. And then it said like, you're the best, which I thought was cute. Um, so I did that using the Dudes 2 stamp set. And then I made, um, I did my Lawn Fawn. Was it Lawn Fawn? Yeah, it was Lawn Fawn. Those stencils, yes. You can get them either at um, Ranger. If you type in exclamation point Ranger, it should give you a link to go and shop over there if you wanna pick these up. Otherwise, you can also find them, I think, at scrapbook.com. Um, so if you do exclamation point scrapbook, D-O-T-C-O-M, you can shop through there. It'll take you right over or... Um, Joggles might have it. So if you do exclamation point joggles, I think I think they might have the stencils also. I know that they have some of the Simon Hurley stuff. So, um, okay, Belinda says we need a summary, a colorful summary card. Okay, I think we can work with that. Why don't we do something a little unexpected with our stargazer stencil. All right, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to uh, do my ink blending first. Okay, now this stencil is a little bit sticky, you guys, because I used it with pixie spray, and I gotta admit, I can't get it off. <laughs> um, so pixie spray is great, except for if you wanna store it in a sleeve like I do, because um, it sticks to it, and I, I don't know, it like never comes off. And I've washed it with soap and water, 
I'm not really sure. I love the pixie spray, but I don't know. Oh, Belinda, they're really good. I'll blend with them now so that you can see them again. But I really like them. I think they're super fun colors. Um, they're really good quality. They work with water, which is great because you can do those water techniques. I think they're really versatile. I like them a lot. Um, now, they're not as reactive as water. I like, for example, like the Distress inks or oxides, but um, they do have that ability to to move around with the water. Hey, Roberta, um, with warm water and Dawn, it still couldn't get it off. Yeah, see, I don't know. I couldn't get mine off either. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to use some, Lord have mercy. Hey, Simon, we were just talking about all of your goodies. Um, we're gonna be using your inks to make a card. Belinda has requested a bright summary card. So we're gonna go with that. Um, let's get some ink blending foams. And some of these, I have like a bunch in this little bucket that don't specifically go to a color, <laughs> like a, a specific ink pad, but some of these are actually from um, my Simon inks uh, that just didn't get matched up. Uh, let's see. We can use orange for traffic cone. Mm, that's not really a good triple berry color, but I think we can use the yellows. All right, cool. And then we've got some white ones too, in case we need to use that. Um, that's weird. What did I use this for? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm really into the summery stuff anyway, so that's perfect. Um, I need some summer everything. <laughs> I did, I just said, I was like, um, we're gonna show you why you need to order. Belinda said she's been wanting to order them but hasn't done it yet. And I'm like, let me just show you why you need them. <laughs> um, okay, hey Chrissy. So let's do color requests. What colors do you guys wanna see in our summary card? I think that we're gonna layer the Stargazer stencil over top of it in some way, shape or form once we're done. So um, keep that in mind but you guys can help me pick out of which colors you want to see. So we've got uh, Rosy Cheeks, Bee Sting, Traffic Cone, uh, Cone, not Comb, <laughs> Traffic Cone, Slippery When Wet, Over the Moon. So this is a softer yellow than the Slippery When Wet, Overzealous. Oh, you like these colors? Okay, so let's go with then Rosy Cheeks and Traffic Cone for the orange. And maybe both, let's see. Probably we want slippery when wet rather than over the moon. We'll keep beasting over here and we'll do overzealous. And then we just need, all right, you guys can vote clear skies or remember me. I love them both, but I think remember me is probably my favorite. Although for a summer card, it might be better to go with clear skies um, cause it's a little bit brighter and it goes a little better with these bright, colors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll go with clear skies. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we're just going to do some basic ink blending. We can do a rainbow because that'll be cute. So let's get our colors in order then. So pink will go first and then um, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Perfect. And I've got my craft sheet so that I can protect my work surface. I could also use the station, but um, I don't have it handy right now. It's nearby, but not convenient enough that I want to grab it. <laughs> I need to get my room in order, you guys. Everything is kind of all over the place. <laughs> I'm getting there, though. It's getting better. Okay, cool. Um, I do my best creating. Coming up with your ideas, Jess. <laughs> I love you guys for that. I think that that is the best thing about these live videos is having you guys here to create with me and help me with ideas. It's really, really cool. Um, because sometimes when you're just by yourself, it's hard to come up with ideas and it's hard to keep coming up with things consistently when you have already, um, you've already used the product or, you know, like you want to use it in a way that's not 
well, maybe this is just me, but I like to use things in ways that they were not necessarily intended. Like Simon, <laughs> I showed Simon the card that I told you guys I couldn't show you yet because it's not going to be shared until August. I showed um, Simon a picture of it since it's his products. Um, I I did. I showed Simon a picture of it and I, um, <laughs> so he knows what it looks like. But um, I like to use things that are not, are like the way that they're not intended because I feel like it's more fun that way. You can get more out of your um, products. You can use them again and again in different ways. And it doesn't just feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I really like that. Oh, thanks, Simon. <laughs> um, I love using your products. They're so fun. They just make me happy. They're really, really fun to create with. Okay, so for those of you who are not super comfortable with your ink blending, I'm going to give you my tips here. I start heavier at the top. I do always start off of the paper when I'm blending. This is um, the Tim Holtz uh, mini ink blending tool. So it's circular, which is great because you don't get as many, as many like rectangular impressions. It just blends easier in the circles. Um, so your first color, you're going to start off the edge so that you don't get harsh lines of your foam blending pad. And then I just like to do a swirl in my ink pad like this to pick up the color. You can always dab it off on an like an extra piece of paper or scrap paper or something but you can see here that I left a lighter layer of color there so I didn't make it as dark as at the top hey Jibs um and then uh then that way I can blend my next color into it without having a really harsh line where one color ends and another color begins so then when I start my next color I'm going to go a little bit lower than this area first for my more intense color and then I will move up into the other color where I left it a little lighter. And you can see that gives you this really soft blend and it's not a hard line, which I really like. <laughs> and if you guys have questions or anything about how I do something or whatever, anything you wanna know, you guys can always just let me know and I can do my best to answer those questions. And I do like to remind you guys that I'm really not an expert at any of this. Like I just kind of learn as I go um, the one thing I will say is this took me a lot of practice to be able to start doing decent ink blending. And I found that the paper does make a difference. So finding a paper, I'm not saying you need to use an expensive paper, but you need to find a paper that you can work well on because what works well for someone else may not work for you. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. And I was trying to buy all these things that everyone was saying, like, you know, this is the best, you need this, this is what you need for ink blending, this is what you need for X, Y, and Z. And I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't learn it. I don't know what the deal was, but I just kept experimenting with different mediums until I found the ones that were right for me. So here, I found that this random staples cardstock is actually really good for ink blending and alcohol coloring. <laughs> um, and I do, so for me, I like to um, I like to go back and forth. So I love Simon's cardstock, the Stark White cardstock. It's excellent. Um, you guys know that I'm a pretty frugal crafter, and I would still buy that over and over again. But when I don't have that, I do just use my my regular Staples cardstock. Um, but I, I love Simon's cardstock, and I love. Um, the Spectrum Noir actually has a really good marker paper <laughs> that I like to use and it's excellent as well, but it just depends on what I'm doing. Like I'm certainly not going to use those nicer cardstocks for a card base because they're more expensive <laughs> and I want to save that for something where I'm going to do a technique or I know that I need the paper itself to be good quality, not just that I need a piece of paper <laughs> or cardstock. Um, this uh, yes, Simon, you are so right. Yes, change the paper. <laughs> I can't tell you how many things I've ruined on bad paper. And it pills and it gets those little tiny paper balls and it just is not good. Um, or else it absorbs into the paper too fast and you can't get a good blend because it's too absorbent or not absorbent enough and it just sits on top of the paper. There's a lot of issues you can have, but there's a lot of good things to fix it too. So that's always nice. All right, let's go with our slippery when wet. Um, okay, so Belinda says good tips. I missed, uh, you probably had better luck with makeup. 
Oh, mock life-changing blender brushes. Okay, I've only tried, um, I've only tried, that's not true. I've tried both of them, but I couldn't tell you which one was better. <laughs> um, I've used the picket fence ones at Creativation actually. Um, and I, so I used those ones, but only very, very briefly. Um, and then I did use the, the Amazon ones, I think, um, at the On The Make event that Marie Polanco and Corin Wiskman hosted. Look at that beautiful color. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so pretty. I am obsessed. I love that so much. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. Interrupted in the middle of my sentence because it's so pretty. I'm going to make it go up a little higher because I love it so much. Oh, the other thing is do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> because I'm so bad at sticking my fingers right into my ink blending. And that is so irritating when you get fingerprints or blotches everywhere. Um, so what you can do if you are having trouble getting fingerprints on your ink blending panels and things like that, you can either, I just have like this paper towel that I've been using and this was alcohol um, marker. You can use a clean piece of paper or a paper towel and just put it like this while you're ink blending. Or you could use the station or something like that to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around um, while you're ink blending, but yeah. Um, what paper weight is that one? So this Staples one is 110 pound. Um, I, they look the same. I use these in the big ones. The big ones of what? Of this? Of the ink blending tools? Or what? I think maybe I missed some. Oh, the blending brushes. Oh, that's cool. Is it the, um, the stencil brushes? I have those from Clarity. I, they seem very similar, but I'm not sure if they're identical. Um, okay, that's super cute. I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter line here so that hopefully it blends nicely with the green. Just a faint little bit down here at the bottom. And my tip would be don't leave it perfect. It's okay if it goes in kind of like a wonky pattern. <laughs> um, so if if you have a straight line, it, you're gonna be able to tell with your blending that it's a straight line. And it's not going to look like a pretty gradient effect. It's just going to look like strips of color. But if you kind of vary, 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 oh my God, I was trying to say variate. If you try, if you vary the depth or the, the height, I don't know, whatever, the, where you put the ink, then it will be uh, a better blend when you go back over it with another color. This one I think was originally yellow, but I'm just going to use it for green because it's dry and it's not super saturated. So it's not really getting the color anywhere. Um, so I'm just going to use it for the green. Um, like blending with Spectrum Noir's paper. Yeah, Spectrum Noir's paper is really good and it's so thick. Um, Simon's cardstock is really good for ink blending also, especially with these inks. They're, I mean, obviously they were released together. They're formulated to work together. So the Stark White cardstock is excellent for ink blending. It's very smooth. These inks in general are very smooth. Um, so if you don't have anything on hand, you can always use what you have. I mean, like if you don't have his paper on hand, you can always use what you have and it will work. I mean, at least I think it will. Everything I've tried. Um, okay, so I'm getting like little swishy marks in here, <laughs> which I don't love. The reason that that's happening, I think, is because this particular foam blending pad is a little large. Some of them are very slightly different sizes. And if you get one that is a little large, when you blend on the side, you see how it kind of mushes right there and then you get that place where the ink is heavy? That's when you start getting those lines like that. So, um... Just be careful. <laughs> if you notice it, just try to be a little lighter handed um, and hopefully you'll be able to kind of buff those out a little bit. I'm not really worried about it right here because we are going to be using um, the Stargazer stencil over top of it. So I'm totally fine um, with it kind of uh, not being super perfect. But if it bothers you, I mean, you could always start over. <laughs> um, you can kind of buff it out a little bit, but being that it's a darker color there, it's probably not really going to go away. That's okay, though. 
If I really wanted to, I could get a sand eraser out and um, try that, but I don't really care. <laughs> um, it'll be all right. And then if you find, uh, so this works for me, but you guys can do whatever you want. I find that sometimes if I have an area that I like to blend, once my um, blender, once my foam pad is pretty much out of ink, like there's not really much going on in there, I just take it and then just go straight across like this. And it kind of helps to buff things out a little bit and smooth it. I think it looks a little bit better. I still have this mark here, but again, I'm going to put the Stargazer stencil over it. So I don't think you're going to be able to tell at all. <laughs> this reminds me of a Starburst right now. Once I add the blue, it's not going to remind me of Starburst anymore, but <laughs> currently it reminds me kind of of Starburst. I mean, I guess there's no green Starburst. Are there green Starbursts? I know there's red and yellow and pink and orange. Oh, look, I ripped it. Look at me in these nails. Ugh. Sherbert, it's, I just saw somebody make a card that said, um, go shorty, it's Sherbert day. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> um, I love puns, you guys. I really do. <laughs> I don't know why that kind of stuff is so comical to me, but it really is. <laughs> um, okay, so for anybody who was not here at the beginning, I am only 50 subscribers away from 3,000. So if you guys would like to share my channel or a video that I have made that was helpful to you or that you just enjoyed watching, probably not one of my lives because those aren't really fun to watch in the playback necessarily. <laughs> um, but yeah, if there is a particular video that you loved, um, you enjoyed watching or you learned something from, I would love, love, love it if you guys could share those. Um, whether it's with your friends on Facebook or in a group you're in. Um, yes, I'm so close. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could really use your guys' help to get to 3,000. I think that would be so super cool. And I'm actually planning a really fun video hop for when I hit 3,000. Um, and my friend Laura, who is a bit of my craft, I don't know if you guys follow her at all, um, but she is amazing. She is like super, super talented. I love her. If you don't follow her already, you definitely should. Um, so her name is Laura and I'm probably going to say her name wrong, but I, it's Volpes, Volps. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's V-O-L-P-E-S. But she is a bit of my crafts here on, in, or on YouTube and Instagram. If you're not following her, you totally should. Um, oh, thanks Simon. Uh, clean my blending pads with stamp cleaner. Oh, that's interesting. I've never tried that. Oh my gosh, Angela, seriously? <laughs> I love a good rainbow. You stole my wreath builder idea, she says to Simon. Oh gosh. Okay, so you guys, now we have to make a decision. Number one, this is going to look fabulous with whatever we decide to do. This is so cute. Um, like this star pattern I've only really used for nighttime or starry scenes so far. This is going to be so cute. So we have a couple options. We can do some ink blend. I mean, not, yeah, we could do ink blending where we layer more colors on top and just do kind of like a tone on tone sort of thing. Or we can do embossing. So we can use the embossing dabber and put it through the holes and... Uh, then use embossing powder, obviously, <laughs> and melt it and then have that layered on top. My gosh, you guys, I'm going to get the hiccups. What is it about this? Every time I go live, it's probably because I don't breathe because I never stop talking. <sighs> That's probably what it is. But I get the, um, I get the hiccups like almost every time I go live with you guys. Um, can't wait for mine to show up. I thought it would be here by now. Is it the reef, the reef builder? I love the reef builder. I need to get the giant Misty so that I can, the memory Misty, because I want to use the Mega Reef Builder. It's so cool. Um, yeah, the embossing, um, the embossing powder will definitely stick to the ink background. However, I could, I, cause we don't really have enough time. I should probably, if I was going to do the embossing powder, I should probably wait until like tomorrow so that it was really dry. I do have the Ranger powder tool, which we could try. 
but hold your tongue in the roof of your mouth to get rid of them. Okay, well, I'll have to try that. <laughs> um, that's funny. I don't think I've ever tried that. My four-year-old keeps telling me I need to have peanut butter because that will help. And I don't know where he learned that, but whatever. It's cool. Um, okay, Gyps, one of the ones I saw on your previous video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you dry? Yes, you can. I just don't know. It'll warp it for sure, Belinda, if I try to um, dry it as much as it needs to. And I do have the powder tool from Ranger. Um, but since it's so fresh, he, I mean, Simon's probably right. <laughs> I mean, we could try it and see what happens. But we should also probably be prepared for the fact that we'll have to wipe it all off and start over. But we can try it. I can try to heat it up for a little bit and see if it dries and then we treat it with the powder tool. Um, do I have glazes? I do. Oh, you know what I have? <gasps> I know what I'm going to use. Oh my gosh. I know exactly what I'm going to use. Okay, I have this stuff. Um, let me grab it. It's clear. Um, hold on. It's here. Ha ha! It's called Dream Weaver Stencils Translucent Embossing Paste. But you don't have to emboss with it. <laughs> you can just leave it. Um, so I need, I need, ha ha! Which I have right here. Um, this little Nuvo thingamajig. Ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. Um, and you know what? If you use foil behind, your panel won't warp. I didn't know that, Roberta. Um, where is my station? Because I'm going to use it for this. <laughs> Hold on. Here it is. I'm still trying to learn where everything is in my craft room, you guys. <laughs> and some of the stuff really just isn't organized. And that's my own fault. But whatever. Yeah, Roberta, I didn't know that that would work that way. That's cool. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the station and this Simon is actually going to give us kind of a tone on tone effect because it will, it'll be clear. So it will appear tone on tone, which is super cool. Um, that's why I use a foil lined box to heat emboss. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I like it. I think it's actually going to be more functional than my last. Um, my last craft room, my brain is like really broken, you guys. Um, I think it's going to be a lot more functional, but I just have to get it there first. Okay. So this stuff is, um, oh my gosh, for a colorful look mixed with iridescent powders or liquid acrylics. <gasps> That's so cool. Tape metal stencil, metal stencil. Apply paste with a metal palette knife as if icing a cake. Remove excess by pulling the metal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we already did this. Okay. <laughs> Clean metal jar. Oh, metal stencil immediately with cold water. Blah, 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 blah. Dries to a glossy sheen in less than one hour. So we will have to set it aside, unfortunately. At least there's, you know, there's that. Um, for a more opaque. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I've used it before, but you never know. It's better safe than sorry, right? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put some, because here's the thing. I don't want to put it on my ink. This would be the easier way to do it, would be to just go straight from the jar and put it in here and then dip it back in. But the problem is then you tint your stuff and it stains or colors the paste. And so then it's not truly translucent anymore. So you want to be careful with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put some here and I'm going to get a fair amount because I can always return the excess to the jar once I'm done and I won't have, it won't be a waste. So then I can also keep this closed so it doesn't dry out. You want to make sure you get that lid closed all the way so that you don't have any issues with that. It said to apply it with a metal palette knife and I have one, but I'm going to try it with this little tonic one first and see how I like it. Yes, getting organized is very difficult. <laughs> um, I'm always looking for new ways to do things and 
just ways to be more effective and more efficient, especially because I do this with deadlines and I need to know where all my products are. Um, but even if I was just doing it like solely for a hobby, um, I feel like being organized is half the battle. Uh, when you're not organized, it's really difficult, well, at least for me, it's really difficult to feel motivated and feel creative um, when I don't have things in a place where I feel like I can get to them easily and I know where they are. So I struggle because I am at the same time inspired by seeing my supplies. So I like to have them out and visible where I can actually see them so I know what I have and I feel inspired to use it. But I'm also stressed out by clutter. <laughs> um, so I need to have some sort of way to store things that is visually pleasing so that I feel inspired. However, <laughs> I need to not feel too overwhelmed to the fact or like to the point where I can't create because I'm too overwhelmed. <laughs> um, so uh, it's hard to get it the way you want when you're using. Oh, yes. Yes. When you're using this stuff, it's difficult. So sometimes. OK, so the struggle basically is you either have a pretty craft room or a functional craft room. And I am trying to find the balance so that I can have both but it is very difficult. <laughs> it really is. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my little spare paper towel and I'm gonna waste this little bit, which breaks my heart a little bit. However, you can see that it's yellow and that's not gonna work. This is why I didn't wanna dip it back into my uh, container. So I'm gonna do that. I cleaned off my little, um, what is this called? A palette, a spatula, a, cra a spatula. I think it's called a spatula. Um, but now I can go back over here because I did get too much. But I can go back over here with my little silicone spatula, scoop it all back up, and then I'm not wasting it all. See, I can just pop it right back in there. And I can pick up quite a bit with this spatula thingy because it's silicone and that's what silicone's for, right? <laughs> or at least that's what it's good with. I want to use everything too, but I get to the point sometimes where it's just not possible. And I do get sent some product from companies, not like a ton of stuff, but I get sent some stuff. And so in combination with the things that I buy myself and then um, things that I get sent to use, I do end up with a lot of stuff. Oh my God, Stacy said a craftula and my life is made. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Uh, my cat's knocked down. No. 200 Copic markers. That's going to be a pain to clean up. Tell me you didn't have them sorted by um, color and all of that already. <laughs> um, okay, so... I'm simultaneously in love with this and I'm so sad about this because... It's going to be dimensional, which is perfect. It's so cute. I love it white like this. However, when it dries, it's actually going to be clear. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm torn because I love it how it's white. But when we're when it dries, it will be clear. So it's kind of like a good thing and a bad thing. But all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this off to the side for just a second because I need to clean off my stencil. And... Um, I don't because obviously I'm live right now. I don't have time to go and run it under the water. Um, so at the very least, I'm going to use my little distress sprayer and I'm just going to spray the heck out of it with some water. Um, oh, you do have them sorted, of course. <laughs> Lucky for me, mine are just kind of thrown in the container currently. Um, so if somebody knocked them over, it would be irritating, but not really the end of the world. But if I had them sorted like that, oh, I'd be mad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I want to at least get the majority of this off of my stencil, uh, while it's still wet. You do not want to let this stuff dry. Um, can you spray anything with color to keep the stencil look? Uh, what? I think I'm confused. What do you mean, Stacy? That's probably me just being thick. Did you mean before I cleaned it off? Can 
and you spray anything with color to keep the stencil look. Like, did you mean like use it again instead of wasting it? <laughs> like I just did? Probably. Now it's a little bit tacky, but like I said before, I had sprayed it with pixie spray, so I think that's just as a result of that. But it's pretty good and clean. Now I can go back later and, oh, to keep the color. Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I could stencil it once with a darker, do you know what I mean? Like I could, I could put a color down first or you can tint it. So it said on there that you can mix it with like liquid acrylics or um, uh, something about powders, I think. Um, and so you can color it before you put it on. So that's cool. All right. Now we have to figure out what else we want to do. Oh, I guess I should probably clean this too so that my station doesn't get gunked up. All right. I'm going to hold this in place while I pull it up so that I don't mess it up anywhere. But look how cute that is. I really like this, you guys. It's so pretty. It's the cutest summer scene you ever saw. It's so summery. <laughs> I love these colors. Oh yeah, like Perfect Pearls or Pearl X powders, yeah. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side and then I'm gonna wipe this up so that my station doesn't get destroyed. Uh-oh. <laughs> you gotta be quicker than this apparently because it's starting to dry because that was a really thin little bit. The cool thing about the station is you really can just wipe it right off. That's pretty cool. Yep. Okay, cool beans. All right. And yes, I just said cool beans. Judge me. <laughs> could I ink over it after it dries? Probably. I could probably just lay the stencil right back on top of it and then um, do it again with another color or, I'm not sure if it would stick to it though. Okay, so there's our background. Now let's figure out what we want to do. Um, what we want to do for the rest of the card. All right, I know we did this once before, but I feel like we need to figure out all the words that you can make with this hello Uvar uh, apostrophe. <laughs> I still laugh thinking about Simon trying to explain to people that it didn't actually spell a word. They're like, what is this? Like, what are all these letters? And we determined last time that he could spell his last name, Hurley. H-U-R-L-E-Y. Yep. <laughs> still true. He could still spell his name. That's cool. Um, so, yes. Okay. Let's figure out what we are going to do. Now, uh, we could do You're Out of This World because it's got the summer theme with the colors and the, then it's got, like, the stars. So, the stars will still apply or you know what I mean, outer space type theme, <laughs> even though it's the summer kind of thing. Um, and I think I want to keep this more of like a graphic card rather than using the stamped images because, I don't know, I think that'll look really cute. And I think that black will look really cute. You guys know how I love my black with um, white heat embossing on it. <laughs> um, okay, so... Jumping by to say, I'm so flippin' excited. Cheers, you did it. I'm here for you. Oh, I just touched it. I need to move this out of the way because otherwise I'm gonna touch it and I'm gonna be really upset with myself. Um, we've got happy birthday. Hmm. All right, well, I definitely wanna use you're out of this world. And then maybe I can, hmm. I was trying to think if maybe I could do like some sort of combination with these ones here. And I can actually move this now because we don't need this anymore. Yay! The normal work surface is back. Okay, so I definitely want you out of this world. This one? Yeah. This one. Okay, and then who's got ideas? Give me all the ideas. We can use one of these. Okay, so you're out of this world. So like you did it or uh, there was one, I think. Yeah, so here we've got congratulations. 
Do you want me to look up words with the letters again? I mean, maybe. Um, so we could do like, congratulations, you're out of this world. Um, I don't know. Or we can try to make a word with space training. <laughs> Um, I mean, honestly, we could do hello, you're out of this world, or whatever we want. Uh, we could also do you are, right? Y-O-U, yes, Y-O-U-A-R-E. So we could do you are, and then out of this world. That could be cute. She says, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, and then we've got, you've got this. To the moon and back. Hmm. Hey, you're out of this world. Yeah, we could do that. That could be cute. H-E-Y. Okay. Um, and then do we want to, are we going to cut them out? Why don't I do them in, let's try it on black. I know, okay. We can experiment and see what we like. If we want to stamp them in um, on white in black or a different color. But because the background is so colorful, I might lean more towards doing something simpler. Um, what did we say? Hey. Hey. Oof. Stay on there. All right. H, E, and Y. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see. So this is one, two, three, four. Hmm. I'm trying to be strategic about this so that if I want to change something and I want to use it a little bit differently, I can. Because if I do it this way, that allows me to, if I wanted to, keep it as a strip, I could. Or I can try to cut the letters out individually. Um, whatever we decide we want to do. All right. So we've got hay, which is hopefully lined up more or less. <laughs> the E is a little bit high. But that's the beauty about having, oh Lord, that's the beauty about having the uh, Misty, is you can just change it. It's so easy. So. Okay. <laughs> there are a ton of words. It's true, it's true. But that's how we found, what did we do last time? Lovely? I think we did lovely, you're lovely. It was so cute. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this powder bag tool from Ranger. Uh, we're just gonna plop it right on, get it nice and coated. Actually, it goes this way. It would help if I actually coated the right section. Ooh, look at that. That side's much more. Um, that side's really powdery. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna use, first of all, did you guys, I'm gonna use this translucent um, watermark ink from Spectrum Noir. But did you guys know that you can use perf oh Lord have mercy. You can use perfect medium to heat emboss if like you couldn't find your watermark ink or something like that. You can totally use perfect medium. <laughs> if you have that handy. <laughs> I've done it. I couldn't find my uh, embossing ink and so I used the um, perfect medium and it worked perfect. Lee <laughs> all right I'm gonna try to do this Lord have mercy I'm gonna have to stamp it again there's too much powder and now there's hairs all right I'm just gonna do this oh cool Lisa said she's done that too I never really thought about it before but I couldn't find it and I was like would this work <gasps> this totally works <laughs> it was pretty cool all right, so I'm going to use the Ranger White Embossing Powder for this. Oh. oh, Simon says he does that all the time. That's awesome. Well, I certainly didn't come up with a new idea. You guys are ahead of the game. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, hmm, I can't find what I'm looking for. Maybe this will work. 
and it did and I was so excited. I love it when stuff like that works out because there's always a chance that it's not going to work and you're going to ruin whatever you're working on, but I guess that's half the fun. <laughs> the trying things out and seeing if it works because then you feel accomplished when it does work. You're like, yeah, I did a thing. <laughs> it is really nice and sticky too. I like it a lot. I've got some stray powder here, even though we did all of that, um, <laughs> all of that powdering. All right, so this is totally weird, but I've been using this little, um, I think it's for clay or something. It's, it's like a little stylus, so it's got like the little ball on the end. And I actually bought them to use with my alcohol inks, but I've been using them to get stray embossing powders off of my, or em, yeah, embossing powder things off of my stuff um so like I just kind of like move it I don't know this one's maybe too small um and we can always use a paintbrush although this paper may have already been heat embossed on because some of this is not coming off and if you're gonna blow on it, you know, just don't blow on it too hard because then all your powder on your actual letter where you want it to stick will not stick any longer. <laughs> so you just wanna be careful. Okay. I like this paintbrush for this because it is um, very flat. <laughs> and I've never used it before for anything except for this. So um, it's nice and clean. I don't have to worry about, you know, anything sticking in weird places. It just works really well. Okay, a little bit more right here. And next to the Y. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna get the heat tool and melt all this powder. Sorry if it's pretty loud. still have it on my desk somewhere is the question. I had a little baby Swiffer clock, but I'll just get a new one. It's fine. So I keep them in here. You guys that watch me frequently know that I have this, but I just keep this in with my embossing stuff and I find it really super handy for when you're done because then you can just swoop it right over and it picks up the extra anti-static powder and any stray embossing pieces that are left behind, any little grains of embossing powder. And then, because I'm apparently very messy, I like to go over my work surface and just pick up the stray powders. <laughs> uh, want to catch me offline, Nightbot says. I had somebody asking me um, if Nightbot was legit. They, were, uh, they commented on my video after the fact and they were like, hey, um, is this, who is this Nightbot person? Are they legit? <laughs> and I was like, oh man, sorry, it's my bot. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess this is not quite centered, but what I was thinking, I'm gonna trim this panel down eventually. <gasps> that could be so cute, you guys. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna trim this panel down and then I'm gonna put this giant hay in black, like right across. That's so cute. I know that that's really big, but I kind of like it. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, I don't know why I like stuff like that, but I do. So I like the hay. And then, so we'll set that up there for now. I'm going to leave it just as is. Almost time for bed. Oh no, Bonnie. Well, hopefully we won't be too much longer. I know that this, um, this is starting to dry. However, because you can see that it's turning a little bit clear in some places. Well, I hope you can. It's a little shiny though as it starts to dry, so it makes it kind of hard to tell. But um, yeah, uh, it's starting to dry, but I don't know how long it's gonna take. And I also don't know if you can use a heat tool on it. 
I'm not sure. I've never actually tried to speed up the drying process by heating it up. We could try that in a minute and see if it works. We'll see what happens. We can always blend another background if it doesn't work out, right? <laughs> um, okay, so now that we've got our hay done, we want to do You're Out of This World. So, what is sticker? Oh, the stickier. Um, we were talking about the um, using perfect medium for heat embossing instead of embossing ink because uh, recently I wasn't able to find my embossing ink and I needed something to use. So I used Perfect Medium and I had never tried it before and apparently it works pretty well. And um, other people had already tried that and so they knew about my cool little hack. <laughs> it's just a little paper and ink, you're right. I'm trying to get better about that, Heidi, about not caring so much about ruining something. It's really hard for me to let go. You guys know that. You guys watch me frequently enough to know that I have a hard time just sort of going with the flow and trying things, not knowing if they're going to work. I like to have a little more reassurance, you know, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> but oh well, it is what it is. We all have our things we struggle with, right? All right, so then we're gonna add you're out of this world. And if we want to, later, we can always cut these apart and make them individual little words so that it breaks up the space a little bit since we do have that giant hay up there. Um, I hate to even apply any more powder to this, but we'll add a little bit. <laughs> My poor little paper is powdered out. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind about this particular um, uh, pad, ink pad, this watermark ink is that it um, is very, very squishy. So you can see maybe that I'm getting these marks all the way around because I'm, I pushed too hard. So I don't want to waste the ink. So I'm going to try to get better about that. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try to get better at that and not um, not press so hard. It's just a habit, I feel like. I don't know why. I'm just really heavy-handed with pretty much everything. <laughs> oh, Heidi, I know. I appreciate it so much. You guys are all so super encouraging and supportive, and I love you all. It really makes my day to have you guys in here with me, seriously. I hope you guys know how much I value you. I do. Every time one of you pops in here and says hello, my little heart is just so full and so happy. Makes me really, really feel very lucky to have all of you guys in my crafty corner. <laughs> Alright, let's bust out that paintbrush again. Yeah, I think that this um, particular piece of cardstock was used in some messy heat embossing. <laughs> I say that because I apparently wasn't very careful the last time I used it. Whoops. Oh well. It's okay. Another thing I keep trying to tell myself is that it doesn't have to be perfect because nine times out of ten no one's even gonna notice those stray little bits of embossing powder that got left behind or whatever, like people aren't going to notice that like I do. <laughs> I notice it because I'm the one making it, but when they see the finished product, they're not going to be like, oh, look, she didn't, um, she didn't do her embossing right. <laughs> I did get a little bit of my O off, so I am going to um, put just a little tiny bit of powder on here right there on my little O. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so some of this, there's some stray powder on here, but that's okay. It's all right. Um, it's so great to have this to watch now that I'm staying next to my mom. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> um, I know the situation is not great. 92. She's doing great. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. 
Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> I just realized I should probably turn the direction of my heat tool a little bit because I was pointing it right at my iPad. Whoops. Okay. All right. And my trusty Swiffer. 92 is really awesome. That's so cool. Um, all right. So we have an option here. We can either, which we don't have to decide right now, but we have the option to, um, let's see. We have the option to either cut each of these words out individually or leave them as a strip. So if we leave them as a strip, it will be kind of bulky, but, I think it would be kind of cute and also actually it could be really fun to do like some extra little strips like this and like I don't want to cover too much but something to make it look fun and geometric ish you know what I mean cute little strips no, you guys. <laughs> and then we can put one here at the top of hay. Then it looks a little less weird to have these big bulky things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I switch these two and put the second big one. Uh, a nice way to say accident. What? Um, so very blessed to have her as a layer of blessing. Oh, uh, not, oh, I see. I missed the first part, so I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you guys are all so sweet. Oh, Bonnie, that's so sad. My dad passed away when I was 21, so I didn't. He, it's funny because, well, I mean, that's not funny, but it's funny because he always used to joke about how um, we were going to have to be changing his diapers at some point. He was always like, oh yeah, I changed your diapers. Now you're going to have to change mine when I'm old. Um, so we would always like groan and, you know, make a big complaint out of it. But it was all in good fun. Um, so actually tomorrow, ugh, tomorrow is actually the nine year anniversary of when my dad died. Um, June 13th. Okay, so it is for those who uh, learn that perfect medium stamp pads have a shelf life of a year. Well, I don't know about that because I've had mine for um, like, at, I mean, at least a year and a half, but it might be, I got it for Christmas, not this year, but maybe the last year before that. Um, and mine's working still <laughs> um and it's working for me I don't know um okay so I think that this is really cool I actually kind of love that this at an angle so if we can maybe figure out how to make that work that would be super cool um had mine longer than a year yeah sorry for your loss Ten oh 18 years Belinda good grief um let's see I'm gonna try and see if we um, if we heat this up if it will dry faster. Let's let's just try it out and see what happens. Sorry about the noise. I don't want to warp it too much, so I'm gonna try to keep it moving as best as I can. When it dries, it's like translucent. So all the, oh, it'll be, um, it won't be white anymore. But I also don't want to burn it. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. 
because this heat tool is very hot. definitely doesn't have that problem but I don't know maybe it was an old one when you got it I'm not sure like maybe it had been out for a while I don't know this mine seems to be doing okay I think this is working however I do have a couple of spots. Um, oh, Ranger told you it was a one year shelf life. Huh, that's interesting. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if this is completely dry yet or not. <laughs> there are a couple spots that I know that seem not quite dry, like, but that could just be Oh yeah, it wasn't like completely adhered. There's like an air bubble in there or something. Um, that's actually really cool, you guys. It's dry. Ha ha! So you can use your heat tool, apparently. Just be careful not to burn it. And I will tell you that using the heat tool, it's not quite as smooth as it was when I did it um, just by air drying. So it does have a little bit of a rough texture to it versus if you let it air dry, it's pretty smooth. Um, so it just depends on if that bothers you or not. But for me, I don't really care. <laughs> That's fine with me. No one's gonna see that anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and chop off some of the sides. Yeah, it did a little bit. It's very minimal, but it's definitely something. <laughs> um, so I'm going to trim off just the edges here. Throw that over there. Four. Yeah, the texture will probably be really cool. Woohoo! And I find that this is really nice when you do an ink blended background anyway because it helps get rid of some of those lines um, that you may not want from where your, your uh, ink blending tool started on the edge. Um, but, you know, all right, I'm digging it. Okay, so now we've got our pretty background. Look at it, it's so cute. Um, and then, now I can always chop off the excess because I did not make this quite even. Uh... I'm okay with covering the background because it's subtle enough that, okay, my problem, you guys, is this. My problem is that I spend all this time making backgrounds and then I never use them because I don't want to cover them up. Um, and I have to get over that because I can't just have a million backgrounds that I never use because they're too pretty to put anything on top of. Um, you know? Um, okay, so I would do like this one here and then I'll trim off the excess, you know, on the side over there so that it doesn't look so weird. <laughs> and then I can put it at an angle like so. Maybe not quite so much of an angle <laughs> like that. And I can either do that one at an angle. Let me straighten out the card so you can tell what it will actually look like. Or... I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you like it at the angle? Does it make it a little more whimsical? And then we would chop off the sides over here, obviously, so that it was even. Um, and then that way the stars poke through so you can see them above and below. Um, then that kind of does the whole you're out of this world thing. I think it looks cute. I think the black really makes the colors pop a lot. I think it's cute. All right. So, let's, mm, what am I going to do? 
think I'm going to use, I was trying to decide what kind of glue I wanted to use. <laughs> um, I'm going to use my Lawn Fawn Connect, or not my Lawn Fawn Connect. The Gina K is the Connect one, but mine's pretty much out of glue. So, oh, I think I left the lid slightly open, you guys. Oh, it's a little bit clogged. <laughs> so if something suddenly squirts out of the end, you'll know what happened. <laughs> Oh well, happens to the best of us, right? All right, so I'm just gonna try to keep these where they are for the most part so that I don't have to refigure out the placement. Um, and then once everything is all glued down, then I will just chop off the sides all at once. I think this is gonna be cute. And I don't know why, but I like this, um, this black with the rainbow sort of vibe for summer cards. I made a card last year that was like all rainbow print and whatever. And then it said, um, um, it said, love you like a summer day. I loved that card. I actually got the inspiration for that card from Giannis Makula because she was making these really cute cards um, with like rainbow and black and it looks so vibrant and pretty and I was like I have to do that <laughs> oh look at me blowing the papers across with my breath whoops it's a little low there we go um watched a video today and the person used adhesive runner and liquid glue huh I mean I guess they just didn't want to have the card fall apart I don't know I, I try not to use I guess it depends but I don't like to use multiple types of glue simply because I am cheap and I don't want to have to pay the cost of having to use multiple types of glue so I try to just use whichever one is going to do the job best and leave it at that I had one for many years, but this one is a mushy mess. Is that your, are you talking about your perfect medium, Roberta? That's a bummer that it is um, not in good condition. Cause like I've had mine for a long time, but I haven't actually even used any of the perfect pearls, which is ridiculous. I saw Simon's video um, on using the perfect pearls and I was like oh my gosh this is so cool I have to try this and then I never did because I had have had like so many different things going on <laughs> and I just haven't gotten the chance to do it and I really need to do that all right last one you guys Maybe we can add a couple clear sequins or something, but other than that, I don't think we're going to do much else to this little card. Okay, I'm going to pop this on over here. Now, these ones I'm leaving a little bit longer just because um, since they were at an angle, I had to kind of move them more centered, I guess. I do that too so I can place it easier. The wet glue allows for movement. The tape runner holds it when it's in place. Huh. But how does the... How do you move it if the tape runner is holding it in place? Do you know what I mean? Like, do you use them in the same place? Like, do you use the, um, do you use the liquid glue right on top of the, um, right on top of the tape runner? Because I don't really understand how that works. Because otherwise, wouldn't it just hold it in the same place? Maybe I'm overthinking it. <laughs> okay, right in the same space. Yeah, wouldn't the glue just hold it in place when it dries? But if you don't have time to wait for it to dry, maybe? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't do that, so I don't really know. I'm sure they have a reason, though. Everybody's got a reason. Ah. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit more because it is kind of hanging off the edge just a bit there. All right. There we go. Whoop, whoop. 
And you guys know that I'm going to put this on a white card base. Because <laughs> that's just what I do. I think this is super cute, you guys. Uh, uh, yeah, I use... Um, oh, I never thought about using it on the foam tape. That's a good idea. I use... I stopped using liquid glue on my foam tape because it was warping my panels and I got really irritated. <laughs> and so now I use the double-sided tape from scrapbook.com instead. Look at it. Oh, it's so cute. You guys, I really like this. I think I'm gonna pop up the whole panel on some foam and add like maybe some clear sequins or something and then call it good. Um, so let's check out the foam situation. Because this is a rainbow card, I feel comfortable using some random colors of foam on the back. <laughs> I'm not really too worried about it. We'll see if we can use up most of these green ones, but a spare <clears throat> purple probably wouldn't hurt. Um, I just keep these scraps of fun foam or whatever it's called for when I need them. Just such an occasion as this. Uh, let's see. So this is the um, double-sided adhesive that I was talking about. Um, oh, you guys, I just got a chair mat for my chair for the first time. You know, like the ones you put down that you roll on with your rolly chair. I gotta admit, I don't like it. It really irritates me. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, let's, let's, this one will go somewhere in the middle. Using both gives you a little movement time. That's good to know. I just wanna make sure all of these are not too wide. Perfect. And then this one can go here in the middle somewhere. I'm just gonna trim it off. I almost trimmed my card panel on accident. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. All right, cool. So all I'm gonna do is take all these pieces, <laughs> pop that over like that. I'm gonna put some foam on both sides of them. Uh, not foam, gosh. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape on both sides of them. And I like this because it's super easy to uh, rip. Like you don't have to cut it with scissors or anything like that. You just hold your finger there and then you're done. Move on to the next one. I really like that. I like anything that makes making cards easier. And this definitely does that. <laughs> Super easy. Thanks, Bonnie. I'm excited about this card. I like, so I love the critters and I love to use them for my cards, but sometimes it's really nice to have a card that doesn't have any cute little characters on it or anything like that because, I don't know, sometimes you just want a card that's like a little more grown up, I guess. But not, I mean, not to say that like any of the critters are not grown up, but certain people just aren't into that. So it's nice to have, hi Linda. It's nice to kind of have a variety of different styles of cards, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Whoops, I ripped it. Um, yeah, I'm on super late, Linda, because um, I actually ended up going out to dinner with my kids and my husband tonight, and we, um, we don't normally do this, but we went to a buffet, and so it was the kids' first time since they remember. They've been to a buffet before, but... Um, it was their first time that they remember being to a buffet and so they were like in awe of all of the things that they could choose and they were just really excited and we had a really fun time letting them, you know, pick and choose and fill their plates and stuff. So um, we wanted to kind of wait and enjoy it. Look, my nail chipped. Oh, bummer. That stinks. Oh well. <laughs> Uh, get the tape with glue on dimensionals when sticking with flat surfaces. Yeah, I mean, I think just whatever works for each person, the more power to them, because, um, oh yeah, they had a blast, Linda. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, whatever works for you, 
whatever works for whoever. <laughs> I guess just do it whatever way you like best. There's no real hard and fast rules, I guess. <laughs> oh, no Stanley Cup for Boston. You and who else is the other person? Is it Roberta? Roberta, do you watch sports? Is it you who was saying that you were a Boston fan? Somebody else recently was just saying that they were watching Boston. Who was that? My memory is not what it used to be, you guys. However, I think my memory just picks and chooses what it wants to remember because I can sing all the words to the poke rap, um, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it is the song that goes along with the series of Pokemon. Um, and there are 150 different Pokemon. And this poke rap just lists them all <laughs> in no particular order. It's just like random names of made up creatures. And I know all of the words. <laughs> don't ask me why. Um, don't ask me about it. Just don't, don't ask me about that. But I can't remember like half the time what I came into the room for. <laughs> But like after my husband and I's like first time being with his family and stuff, like I knew all of his family's birthdays. I can, I, I know them all better than he does. And it was like the first time um, that I heard them, it was like, oh yeah, I know them. And he'd be like, how do you remember this? <laughs> um, I can hear around town, we must have won the Stanley Cup <laughs> in St. Louis. I guess so, because Boston didn't win it, and if those were the two teams, I haven't been following hockey this year. My cousin's husband is a scout for the NHL, um, and so one year we actually got to have a Stanley Cup party when, because he used to be a scout for the Kings, um, the LA Kings, and um, yeah, he used to be a scout for the LA Kings, and now he's a scout for somebody else. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even remember the, I can't even remember who he's a scout for right now. But anyway, so when you win the Stanley Cup, everyone gets to have a day with the cup. Um, like everybody that's on the team or whatever. And so he got his day and we had a Stanley Cup party, which was so super fun. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. Um, I got to drink out of the Stanley Cup, which is probably really gross because I don't know. <laughs> it's probably really gross, but it's whatever. So, uh, they filled it up with like, I don't even remember what, but anyway, um, <laughs> so we got to party with the Stanley cup and I have pictures of me standing with it somewhere. There's a picture of my son Kieran inside the Stanley cup, like sitting in it. Um, because like I said, we got to, um, we got to spend the day or whatever with the Stanley Cup, and um, he was only around two months old, I think. Um, and so there's a picture of him sitting in it, which is cute. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm frozen. Whoop. I was just adding sequins, so you didn't miss anything super interesting. Apparently my battery's at 20%. That's okay, because we're about done. <laughs> um, okay, you guys, so that is our card for today. I think I love it. I think it's pretty cute. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance yet to check out the blog hop that is going on for the Brutus Monroe Inspiration team today, you totally should. Um, we're all using June Inspiration products, or I'm sorry, June subscription products. So like the stamp of the month, the um, inspiration box, I don't know, all that stuff. All the like uh, embossing powder of the month, all the cool things. <laughs> um, so we're all using those and showcasing cards made with those products. So you should totally check it out. You can do exclamation point blog. If you want my blog address, it'll take, give you a link to go right over there. Um, but as always, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, I am so close to 3,000 subscribers and I'm going to have a big uh, video hop when I reach 1,000 subscribers. 
So if you guys feel like sharing a video that has inspired you or that you learned something from or just really enjoyed watching um, with your friends or a group that you are in on Facebook maybe, that would be really super awesome to try to help me get right over that little hump of 3,000 <laughs> subscribers here on YouTube. Um, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys felt like sharing. Obviously no pressure if you don't want to. <laughs> um, and then I will be, just so you guys know, I will be live again on Friday three times, but I won't be live on my channel here. If you're not already following the Brutus Monroe page on Facebook, make sure that you follow it because there's going to be lives um, for an entire 24 hours. There will be videos going on to celebrate the release of new stamps from Brutus Monroe. There are a ton of new products, you guys, and I'm really excited. I get to do at least three lives for an hour. She said, oh, the pressure. <laughs> um, I will get to do at least three lives with three different stamp sets that are coming out, and I'll get to showcase them for you and um, get kind of like the first look at you know, what they look like and what they're all about. So if you guys want to hang out with me on Friday, I will be live at 6 p.m., 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern Time on the Brutus Monroe Facebook page. So definitely go over there and follow the page so that you get notified when they go live. Um, and I will be there on Friday, this Friday. So not tomorrow, but the day after. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So that is all I have, I think. Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys, um, like we were talking about on Monday, if you guys want to help me out and support my channel, I always really appreciate that. So if you want to do that, you can always shop through me and my affiliate links. Um, that helps my channel and helps me be able to, um, like pay for my blog and, um, the link tools to help be able to link all the products for you guys. And just those maintenance things that I, um, have to take care of on my channel. So it really helps me when you guys shop through my links. Um, again, no pressure, Heidi. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that definitely helps me. And since we have all these big release items coming out from Brutus Monroe, it would be super, super awesome if you guys did shop through me, um, on Friday when you place your orders through Brutus Monroe, you just got to make sure that you click one of my affiliate links. Um, so any of my links here in my YouTube descriptions or, um, you can also go to my blog and then there is an affiliate info page. You can just click the little icon that says Brutus Monroe and it'll take you right over there using my affiliate link. Um, okay. Oh, Roberta says not hockey. Okay. Roberta, I think you might be a little bit behind. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, okay. So that is all I have you guys. I love you all so, so much. I will see you guys again on Friday over on the Brutus Monroe Facebook page. And I can't wait to create with you guys again. Hugs and love to all of you. Mwah. <laughs>